we withdraw our consciousness from its perhaps habitual focus and bring the body and the emotional sentient states and the lower mind into a condition in which they become relatively passive, no longer the focus of our attention. Because we are essentially much more than these vehicles with which we have uh, wrongly identified ourselves. And we begin to recognize ourselves really as a unit of consciousness, what we call the soul in incarnation, surrounded by these lower spheres, but really not identifying with them, identifying as a point of being consciousness, the observer. The observer eventually turns into the monad. In fact, the spirit the monad is the great observer of all that transpires in lower worlds. And as our familiar worlds fade out, the world of the soul makes itself present to our observing consciousness. And we sense ourselves to be in a world of light, of magnetic spiritual love. of spiritual, sacrificial power. And no matter where we are in the world, in apparent time and space, we are all connected with each other in soul. And we begin to feel this our connection as units of light, love, and power on the higher mental plane, forming a unity which is not conditioned by time and by space. And in this way we merge with the members of the new group of world servers with all the men and women of goodwill we can visualize this merging in the state of soul And in fact, really, with all of humanity, both those who are still on the physical plane and others who are outside the body and yet there is this interconnectivity in this one being we call humanity. And we know, or 
since we know the truth of a great second ray mantra, not is but me. Let the word go forth, reverberating through the silence. Not is, but me. And all the lesser manifestations of ego vanish in this unity. And a higher form of selfhood, which is unitive, is perceived. We are focused in an illumined state. It is the light of the soul brought into our common focus on the plane of mind at a point of tension. And we as a group, a meditating group, perhaps joined by numerous others at this time, are imbued with the will to initiate, the will to unify, the will to evolve, the will to harmonize, the will to act, the will to cause, the will to express. These forms of will from the group soul energize that mental unit which we hold in common. Energy is drawn up from other aspects of the personality also energizing this point of focus on the mental plane. We are like one soul-infused mind. And with our creative imagination, we will begin to envision the strands of the Antikarana uniting our point of focus on the lower mental plane with the abstract mind, the lowest point of the spiritual triad, according to our soul ray, so will be the colors we use and also the color of our personality ray, each of us responsible for a dual strand of light. First ray red, second ray indigo, third ray green, fourth ray yellow, fifth ray orange, sixth ray silvery rose or blue, seventh ray violet. So via the imagination, each of us sees a dual stream or strand color connecting with the abstract mind, 
to help us embrace understanding of the planet. Touching the world of immediate straight knowledge or intuition, where the divine patterns are seen suddenly, simultaneously, with inclusive reason. And still higher to the point of spiritual will, where the will of Shambhala and of our monad can be transferred into our understanding. Multiple rising strands of light, cone-like, if you will, all towards a central blue-white diamond we can symbolize as the spirit, the monad, resident within Shambhala. All the colors represented. Or we can picture ourselves upon a sphere, all related geometrically, projecting our rainbow bridges towards the central diamond at the center of the sphere. Feel the livingness of this rainbow bridge, this group rainbow bridge. This is but the first phase of multiple rainbow bridges which lead beyond the Earth to Venus and other planets to the Sun and beyond. Sevenfold, the ways of return. This rainbow bridge, this cone, this interiorly tending bridge will give us access to the impersonal worlds and even some little hint of the will of God which is so powerfully impressing at this time of Waysak. We will use the second ray word of power that fits with the soul of our planet and the soul of our solar system. I see the greatest light. We will sound the Om three times, seeing a vivid light, white light, projected across the bridge through all phases which it has touched and anchoring in the world of spirit. So we sound the Om as we think to ourselves with an affirmation of will. I see the greatest light. Mm.
It is a group approach via the group Antikarana to the world of will, wisdom, and activity. And in silence we appreciate the nature of this alignment. Worlds higher than the worlds we customarily deal with, and yet not somewhere else, but always right here. The revelation is always present, but must be unveiled if this is to be realized. And in the light of Waysak, there can be so much unveiling, so much deglamorizing, so much disillusioning. And in these worlds, we find the masters of the wisdom. This is their focus. trust. We will offer our salutations to the great lords, but first our salutations to the Buddha, to the Lord of Light and Wisdom. As a group, and especially as a group, we offer these salutations. Salutations to the Buddha, the Lord of Light and Wisdom. Salutations to the Christ, the Master of all Masters, the Teacher alike of angels and of men. Salutations to the Triangle of Masters with whom we work most closely. Oh. 
salutations to the Master Moria, the head of all esoteric schools and organizations. Om. Salutations to the Master Kutumi, the coming Christ of the Age of Capricorn, the one whose ashram most focally prepares for the reappearance of the Christ, the Lord Maitreya. Om. Salutations to the Master Jwalku, who has given us the Bailey teaching. Salutations to your own master as you conceive him to be. Oh. And, so, and so we are with heart. In the presence of the Great Ones, at least imaginatively, Om. and so, salutations, with heartfelt gratitude to your own Master as you conceive him. We offer to our be. salutations to Om. these great energies. We will project together affirming the second ray mantram which you will repeat mentally to yourself as we sound the om together on the second ray note we will think i see the greatest light as we project the brilliant light across the seven colored rainbow bridge Imaginatively, we lift our consciousness towards Shambhala, the center where the will of God is known and identified as a group. We attune to the presence of that great center and to the great Lord, the Lord of the world at the heart of Shambhala. So we begin under this influence.
to turn our imagination towards two planets, the planetary rulers, Let us visualize these bodies specifically in relation to the planet Venus, Venus in relation to Taurus, Venus conveying the beauteous light of the soul, the light of the solar angel illuminating the consciousness with love wisdom and stimulating higher manas so that it may be sensitive to buddhi this is the light we call upon as our higher power This is the light of such great importance for the illumination of the human mind so that it becomes more godlike. The humanity on Venus is already far in advance of that upon the Earth. And we are moving in that direction. We so need the energy of Venus. We so need the energy of the solar angel and Earth needs the energy of its alter ego. It is the higher vibration of this planet above all which must suffuse every disciple, every aspirant, every initiate, rising ever higher into the causal nature until the work of Venus is done and we graduate at the fourth degree. And then it is only done in a certain measure but it has lifted us to the status, to the feet of the solar angel. Of our planetary logos, conveying the light and love of the soul, teaching our logos, and all the monads who are an aspect of our Logos, the nature of pure love wisdom. Our groups need this energy. Let us feel ourselves infused with this energy of love wisdom, of the union of the heart and mind, of true loving illumination, of the ability to think in the heart, to feel with the mind. And we see our groups filled with this energy, breathing it in.
We will sound the om together on the note A. It is sometimes called an indigo note. It is the note with which we will feel the power of Venus entering us. Bringing the illumination of the group solar angel to the group mind. Making possible for us eventually true group initiation. The fusion of the higher mind and the lower mind. The coming of the Buddha mind, Venus. of our planetary logos, conveying the light and love of the soul, teaching our logos and all the monads who are an aspect of our logos, the nature of pure love wisdom. And Vulcan, the downward pointing arrow of manifestation, the first ray, fourth ray, ultimately second ray planet associated with the heart of the sun. But for our purposes, conveying the spiritual will of the atomic plane the nirvanic plane. and yet strangely a planet which is connected with the heart of the sun. This is Vulcan, ruling both esoterically and hierarchically, giving us the first ray through its soul nature, the will of the soul to grip the personality and bend that personality to its will. We have sometimes felt this grip as if one cannot stray from the will of the soul. We will need this fortitude in the coming years. When humanity has the choice to revert or to go forward, and it is the spiritual will of the soul which will make the going forward possible. But even higher, comes the will of the spiritual triad, the true spiritual will, also represented by Vulcan, which helps us persist in the quest for the greatest light, despite all obstacles to enlightenment. The 
The Buddha was called the lion. Master Moria called him that. He had this incredible spiritual will. He was in fact the head of the hierarchy. Gautama and the Buddha may be different, just as Jesus and the Christ, Lord Maitreya, are different. And the Buddha's will to save, extremely potent. And we in our spiritual groups are in need of this adamantine spiritual will. To hold us firm under the influence of the will of God. And we feel the power of Vulcan, spiritual will, entering our etheric body, our emotions, our mind. Fortified we are by that will from on high, rightly used to bring us towards the light, towards the greatest light. We feel our groups infused with this, more illumined, more willful in the right way, more persistent. And we will sound a note. We will use the note D. It's a solar note, but we will consider that Vulcan is veiled by the sun, it's a first ray note. We sound this as we see the group and groups infused by its power. to light. Vulcan drawing forth the radiatory power of matter through the will to light. The spiritual will towards full illumination. So in Taurus then, the union of mind, of heart, and of will. expressing the highest form of love wisdom found in our solar system, 
the blue logos, related also to Taurus, whose color is said to be deep blue. Love and wisdom. touching every unit of life, every unit of life in our system. Solarizing us, its power is pouring through Venus and through Vulcan and reaching on and upward toward the constellation of Taurus itself around which our solar system and its six major brothers are said to evolve. The light of Taurus now in our minds. The penetrating light of the path. This is a beam of light stretching forth from the point in Aries and revealing the area of light control. Illuminating the path, light control. Under the influence of Taurus, May the higher light control all aspects of our life of discipleship. The highest form of aspirational idealism is found in Taurus. the penetrating light of the path, blazing away through all mayas, all glamours, all illusions, till we reach full illumination and beyond. The path leads to the monad, and it is at this time of Waysak when something of the spirit can come through to us. Harmony through conflict comes through this sign and the fifth and the first rays through Venus and Vulcan. The great beauty of pure reason and the Buddhic levels reaches us. Reconciling form and archetype, harmonizing them. And at last we focus within the constellation Taurus itself. This mother of illumination we focus. And together we ponder the phrase, I see. And when the eye is opened, all is illumined. I see. And when the eye is opened, all is illumined.
I see. What do I see? What does the opening eye reveal? The eye which opens between the first and the third initiation slowly. What is revealed? Imagine the illumination of all phases of human life and of the vehicles we use, their light content growing immensely. so that we can be true light bearers I see, and when the eye is opened, all is illumined. Seeing the world of unity, seeing into the underlying world of the soul,
seeing in the light of soul consciousness. the light content of all of matter, which Venus, Vulcan, and Taurus reveals. A world shining with the beauty of spiritual light. One can feel the lighted silence, the synthesis of lighted silence. The great white light which synthesizes all colors in the silence which reveals the one. I see, and when the eye is opened, all is illumined. Matter is light, condensed light, and this we begin to appreciate and to see. And our sense of the light increases as the alignment from the Pleiades and through the little bear of illumination, perhaps the Ajna center of the great being, through Taurus, through our solar logos, through the presence of Venus and Vulcan, these logoi now stimulated into greater power and presence, and to Shambhala of unfettered enlightenment, through all monads, 
who participate in Shambhala and its unfettered enlightenment through and into the hierarchy of masters where all souls are found and we as souls and into every chakra and vehicle that we possess as instruments, the great light, the great illumination flows and it will increase, increase. We carry the light, we do not speak of mundane things except in the context of the real. We achieve occult silence over the next intervening hours before the full moon. We carry the light. And we offer it to humanity, this illumination, as we think out into the field of human consciousness and living. Where is the light needed? Where is it most needed? With what mantra would we carry the light to that most needed area? We visualize a place, a condition in which the light is needed. And through the mantra of Taurus or through whatever mantra we seek to use, we deliver the light through our imagination and see the process ameliorating and then spread that light to all of humanity. We do this three times on the own. forces of enlightenment are greatly at work at this time, helping rid us of the maya, of the glamour, of the illusion, in which the majority of humanity habitually walks, 
Let us be very consecrated during these intervening hours and on the days of distribution to multiply the effect of the light. Multiply the effect of the light. So that Taurus, the great mother of illumination, may have its maximum effect upon our planet. And so the Buddha's great blessing may come to all who may receive and improve the radiation of their lives, the light within their lives, divine understanding, a general enlightenment all around. And now together, friends, together we will sound the great invocation, distributing the light, love, and power to all humanity and the planet and in alignment with the great sources, the Pleiades, the Little Bear, Taurus, our solar logos, Venus, Vulcan, Shambhala, hierarchy and the worlds in which we live. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out. And may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Oh. Hold your point of tension. Remain open to the light. See as much as possible with the single eye, the unitive eye. See in the wholeness, see the whole illumined. Increase the point of tension and be ready for the WASAC 